OK, hi there. In this study video, we'll look at how a period of increasing interest rates can affect one or more of the components of aggregate demand. Well, monetary policy uh, has been tightened in the UK in recent times, with the Bank of England, our central bank, raising their policy interest rate in a bid to control rising inflation. And here's the chart showing the basic Bank of England policy rate, which has risen from 0.1% in the autumn of 2021 to 4% as of January 2023. Indeed, the US Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank and the Bank of England have been increasing interest rates to levels not seen since before the global financial crisis, as this chart shows. Now, the effects of monetary policy on aggregate demand often operate with time lags, but typically they will cause a, slow, a, gro a slowing of growth for these major economies. Uh, the Central Bank in Brazil, you can see here, has raised interest rates from 2% in 2020 to 14% now. So how might higher interest rates affect aggregate demand? This is a common exam question. Well, first of all, uh, we'd expect interest rates that go up to affect consumer spending. Higher interest rates makes it more expensive for people to service their debts, uh, typically the interest rate on a credit card, for example, or the interest paid on a mortgage. And if debt interest goes up, that reduces their effective disposable income, the, the amount of money they have left to spend on goods and services. Indeed, a 1% increase in mortgage interest rates increases the cost of a £200,000 mortgage by £200 per month. So a, a rise in interest rates can have a significant effect on the spending power of people who have borrowed heavily to buy a property. A second uh, effect on households is saving. Because normally when interest rates go up, the nominal return on money deposited in a bank goes up. And it could lead, could lead to an increase in the propensity to save and therefore a fall in consumer demand. If people choose to save more of their disposable income, that means they'll be spending less. A third effect is on business investment. Higher interest rates makes borrowing money more expensive for businesses, large and small. And if the loan costs go up on a loan to finance expansion, for example, that might lead businesses to cut back on planned capital investment. And investment is, of course, a component of aggregate demand. A really important channel uh, in terms of the effects of high interest rates on aggregate demand is through the exchange rate. A rise in UK interest rates, for example, can cause the value of the pound against the dollar or the euro to appreciate, in part because it might lead to inflows of hot money. Now, if the pound appreciates, that makes exports from the UK more expensive overseas, and it makes imports cheaper when priced in sterling. Well, more expensive exports can hit export sales, and cheap imports are negative, of course, in the equation for AD, that can lead to a fall in aggregate demand as firms and consumers reduce their spending on foreign goods. Asset prices. Asset prices can be a big uh, factor affecting demand. Higher interest rates can oftentimes reduce or slow down the growth of the value of assets, such as stocks and shares, bonds and housing. And if assets become worth less in value, relative perhaps to debts, that can cause households to cut their spending in response to a fall in wealth. So, higher interest rates can cause a drop in property prices and housing wealth. And critically, higher interest rates can also cause a deterioration in consumer confidence or Keynesian animal spirits. And of course, consumer spending is the biggest single component of aggregate demand. So here's our ADAS analysis, showing an equilibrium initially at Y1, a little bit below the potential output level of YP. Higher interest rates can lead to a fall in consumer spending, perhaps investment and perhaps exports. But consumer spending is the biggest component of aggregate demand. So in theory, this could cause AD to shift to AD2. And as a result, there would be a contraction of real output and downward pressure on the general price level. And this, I guess, is the dilemma facing the Bank of England that have been raising interest rates to control inflation. But the risk is that if interest rates rise too far, too quickly and stay high, then there could be a recession in the UK economy. Indeed, an IMF forecast has found that only the UK, among leading economies, 
will suffer a recession in 2023, albeit a fairly shallow one. So there we go. That's an updated study video on the effects of interest rates on aggregate demand. Thanks for joining. Stay safe, stay positive. See you soon.